Hey, plant friends! Welcome to episode 104 of Food and Grow Radio. Plant friends, hello! I am so excited to share today's episode with you with our very special guest, Joe Dombrowski of Mr. D Times 3. You might remember him from episode 27, way back in the day, titled Plants in the Classroom. Joe is an amazing teacher who worked with me on that episode all about how to incorporate plants in our classroom as a teacher. Today's episode is all about the fact that classrooms are looking really different these days. And I thought it would be fun to have Joe to come back on the podcast to talk about projects that anyone can do involving plants indoors with their kids at home because we're in the midst of some isolating times and I know that there's a lot of uncertainty around if kids are going back to school, if they're staying here. So we figured why not share some fun, planty ideas to get you growing with your kiddos indoor, whether or not they go back to school. They could still be going to school and you do these projects with them for fun. Before we dive into the episode, I wanted to share that Joe is actually the reason why I have recently gotten on TikTok. Joe's TikTok account has gone crazy in the last couple of months. So if you're interested in silly plant stuff on TikTok and you're on the app, definitely go find me at Bloom and Grow Radio for the silly stuff I'm cooking up there. If you're more of a YouTuber, you can go check out my YouTube channel. We've got a lot of fun videos getting pumped out on YouTube regarding plants, plant care, and even cooking demos with what to be cooking with what you're growing with Billy and my mom. And also, of course, if you haven't filled out the listener survey for Bloom and Grow, take five minutes, click the link in the show notes, and take the survey to help me create the next kind of year of content. I want to know what episodes you guys want to hear about. I want to know who you want to learn from. And I want to know how I can continue to serve you in different, more fun, creative ways that I'm cooking up for next year. This episode is great, and I'm so excited to bring Joe back. So let's just dive right in. Thank you to Soul Tech Solutions for sponsoring today's episode. Plant friends, you know I've got a serious Soul Tech Solutions aspect light addiction. They have been one of my go to grow light companies for years now. Soul Tech Solutions makes luxury full spectrum LED grow lights that look sleek and modern in our homes, all while giving our plants that delicious, highly precise photosynthetic spectrum that's museum quality white light to keep our plant babies happy. So our plant babies are thriving and our apartments are looking awesome. Winter is coming, it's closing in, plant friends, the days are getting shorter, and it's a great time to start thinking about upping your grow light game if you think you need to create some more highlight space for your home with all of your plants. So Soltech Solution has two different types of lights. Their original pendant-style aspect light, which I use to illuminate dark corners in my home to fit more plants. I currently have three aspect lights hanging in my home. And then they also have their Highland light, which is the first-of-its-kind track light system that you can put on your ceiling, and it's perfect for illuminating green walls, plants that are in hard-to-reach places, or even large plants that need light from the sides. Like I said, I've had three of their aspect lights for almost three years now, and I've been so happy with them. We keep our plants on tiered plant stands under the lights so we can access as much light as possible and fit as many plants as possible under those lights. I put the highlight plants closest to the light, and then the farther away from the light the plants get the lower light tolerant the plants become. So I have snake plants on the floor, then I have like medium light tolerant plants in the middle tiers, and then right under the light I have my citrus or my fiddle leaf figs. Plus, the lights are super easy to install and they include a timer with the light and everything you need to install it. So you install it and then you set it and forget it. Whether it's simply just getting through the lower light winter, or if you're like me and you've just got too many plants and too little space and windows and you need to create some more highlight space indoors, Soltech has the solution for you. Soltech is offering Bloom and Grow Radio listeners 20% off with the code 20BLOOM20 Bloom at SoltechSolutions.com. So once again, for 20% off, that's SoltechSolutions.com and the code 20 Bloom. All right, here's Joe. Joe, welcome back to Bloom and Grow Radio. 
Hello, my precious Maria. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm literally so excited to be back on. It's been like almost three years, at least. That is years. so wild. Three Here years since you've been on the podcast, but we have very much been in touch and blooming and growing together. I was offline. just going to say it. You took the words out of my book, baby. <laughs> Joe got me into the Amazon spheres when I was in Seattle last year, and it was the best day ever. Oh, you and I were just like tweaking out. Tweaking out. (laughs) Joe's partner was with us and like we would be engaged with conversation and like every five minutes we were like, oh my God, Alocasio (laughs) Caprea, like (laughs) we couldn't finish any sentences with him. I feel so bad. (laughs) Not too bad though. We did it. Well, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you back on the show after our very successful episode on plants in the classroom. Great. I'm glad it was a cassette. Uh, uh, uh. A cassette. I our just great had cassette. a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. It smells like toast in here. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it's 8 a.m. in Seattle when we're doing yeah. this, mm-hmm. when we're doing this interview. So our first interview was very much for teachers in the classroom, how to green up their spaces. But we are in a very different place in life right now with this crazy period of social distancing and isolation. And you, as my go-to teacher, the leader of the teaching community and the child caretaking community, like what a wild time it's been for people with kids. What is your kind of experience as kind of the voice of teachers? But also I know parents follow you. Like what has it looked like for you in these last couple of months? Wild, 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 wild. (laughs) So I should start by saying very transparent with everyone. Since the last time I've been on Bloom and Grow, I did make a career shift. I don't think we talked about this last time, but Mm -hmm. all through my teaching career, you know, teachers don't make a lot of money. So we often have second jobs. And mine was always being a stand up comic just to like put gas in my car, help top off my bills or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And that was also my dream. I was a stand-up comic for my third grade talent show. And (laughs) I built the audience to be able to do it professionally. So I left the classroom, but I'm still very much an advocate for teachers, shedding the light on the craziness that happens in education without a target on my back through the lens of humor. So I'm not Mm -hmm. in the classroom this year, but very much an advocate for everything that's going on with teachers. And it's insane. You know, I keep telling people, teachers are freaking, freaking out because it's a lot of virtual learning. It's a lot of online learning. And I just keep saying like, take a step back because it's like you're a first year teacher again. You can't expect you to be fantastic that very first year. And the other thing is, everybody's on the same playing field. Nobody has been put in this before, no matter if you've been teaching for two years or 32 years. Nobody has mm-hmm. done this. So everybody's at the same base level. And the worst thing you can do right now is compare. If you dare to compare, you will wind up in despair. So like, don't compare yes. yourself to some other teacher and what they're doing and how fabulous their online learning looks. That might not be you, girl. So do you. If you're doing your personal best, that's all that matters right now. So power to you, babe. Totally. And now we're looking at September and it's really been kind of confusing. I mean, some kids are going back to school. I spoke with a parent yesterday who told me her kids are going back to school, but she's keeping her babysitter on retainer because she's anticipating schools closing back down and Mm. the kids having to come back. So now we have this whole crop, for lack of a better gardening term, of parents who are becoming teachers and are dealing with their kids at home, trying to help them learn. Yeah. And it's wild. So yeah, from like ear to the ground, I mean, I guess it's really varying like state per state, even community to community. Yeah, literally town to town. It's crazy. And honestly, this is a little bit of a controversial statement, but I'll explain it so you understand where I'm coming from. Okay. I personally don't believe that the entire country needs to shut down completely in terms of schooling, right? Morgan and I recently took a trip to Yellowstone and we were driving through like very, very, very rural communities. And we drove past a couple of elementary schools and literally there was like one teacher for every grade in the school and like, seven kids per class. Like, does that community really need to shut down for distance learning, especially when their internet capabilities are probably Mm. less than subpar? Like, probably not. Like, it's probably best for a school like that to go back and to work safely with masks and with parameters and new restrictions. But that school is probably okay to go back, especially if there is like, if it's a very low or no corona area. 
big inner city schools that are going back. I'm over here like, why? And what are you doing? Why are you back in session? Like, this is wild. So it's truly a case by case basis. And we can't really look at the country as a whole right now, because the fact of the matter is, is like, we need to do what's best for kids. And what's absolutely best for kids is having them back into the classroom. So the goal always needs to be to put kids back in front of their teachers, learning the way that we know that they learn best. But that cannot happen until it's absolutely safe. So we really need to look at it through a lens of case by case. Yeah. And I think the beauty of this list of planty projects that we put together Mm -hmm. is we've put this together with the intention to help parents who are home, teachers who maybe might need some like virtual inspiration as well. Like when you think about what's best for kids, I mean, neither of us have kids. So also like disclaimer, like we're talking like we know, like I'm about to say something like I know things, but I don't have kids. But I think humans in general right now, we're spending so much more time on screens than we ever have. Oh, yeah. And my retinas hurt. I'm doing all of this research right now on attention restoration theory, taking your eyes off a screen, engaging with a plant, getting kids to engage with plants in this specific time is extremely important, but also just in general, this is a really fun list for people to do what, even when kids are back at school, it's just a great way to get kids engaged with gardening and plants and understanding how things grow. Even if we weren't living in a coronavirus world where online learning is what's the norm, it's always good to do supplemental things with your kids at home that instill and reinforce the learning that's being done in the classroom. So even if your kids are back in the classroom, what Maria and I are going to talk about right now are concepts that I can tell you as a former elementary school teacher, these are things that I've done in my classroom and things that I know your kids will eventually be learning. So these are just some things that you can do at home to reinforce these concepts, these science concepts. Science concepts. They are. And they actually, if we're going to get specific, some of the things that I'm going to be presenting to you are underneath the Common Core Curriculum Science Standards for Elementary Schools. So they're oh, like, wow. these are actually nationally mandated standards that kids like do actually need to learn before they graduate. So, <laughs> so why not so do if it? If that reinforces the importance, like all power to you, Sista. Yeah. So we've got a list of five ideas indoor plant projects for kids. So why don't we kick off with, and I appreciate you like went back through your lesson plans to find some of these. So let's start with number one, a seed bag. What's a seed bag? This one's so funny because I remember when I was on your podcast for the first time, I had just done seed bags with my students and I was looking at them the entire time that you and I were recording. I I remember (laughs) it so much. So a seed bag is essentially what we're doing is we're allowing students to understand the germination process and the life cycle of a plant. So you're literally going to go from seed to death. We might not get to the harvest phase, but you can adapt the project to get to harvest if you'd like to. Mm -hmm. Also, I feel like a pilgrim when I say the word harvest. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so essentially what you do is you take a two gallon Ziploc bag Mm -hmm. I put about like two cups of soil in the bottom and then you plant a seed. And the seeds that I have used in the past, I love big seeds because big seeds are very, very easy for students to like handle and see. So I'm talking Mm. lima bean, pumpkin, sunflower might even be a little bit small, like definitely look for legumes and interesting. Okay. Yeah. Look for legumes. Those are going to really help you out. Corn, maybe corn might even be a little bit small, but their roots are fantastic. So Mm -hmm. be wise about that. If you have plant knowledge about that, you should know where to go. If you don't, I highly suggest pumpkin or lima bean. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that two gallon bag. You're going to put two cups of soil in the bottom and a light water because you're going to replicate the entire water cycle in this bag. So like mist it till it's a good, fully moist soil, not soaking wet. There shouldn't be any water that's hanging out at the bottom. Just really evenly, evenly moist. And sorry, and that so- <laughs> freaks you out. sorry, how much soil did you say goes in the bag? About two cups. So it's really not about that. But depending on what bag you're using, I'm going to say you're going to want like 
minimally an inch to two inches of soil okay. from the bottom of the bag, evenly. Okay. And then you're just simply going to plant the seed, right? Now you can do two things. You can plant the seed close to the outer wall of the bag for viewing, or you can just leave it in the middle for a little bit of a mystery. Mm-hmm. And then what you're going to do is you're going to seal the bag and keep it closed and don't push all the air out. You definitely want some air in there. So it's a little bit poofy of a bag. And then what I would do is I would use a ticket to a bulletin board and I would pin it to the bulletin board from the top, from the zippy part. So it's not puncturing the other part and just leave it there. Now you're immediately going to start noticing that you can talk about the water cycle with your kids because the first thing that's going to happen is condensation. You're going to get condensation all over that outside of the bag Mm -hmm. and it's going to get really foggy. But then it's going to accumulate so much that it's going to actually turn into precipitation, not in the form of rain, but it's going to precipitate down the sides back into the soil, constantly keeping your soil moist so you don't have to water it ever again, which is pretty fascinating. And then your seed will germinate. And as it germinates, you can watch the roots expand. You're going to see the root structure all throughout the bottom of the bag because it's clear. Eventually, you're going to see your plant sprout. And when that happens, the condensation on the outside is going to like triple even more about the water system. And then it's just going to grow and grow and grow. And you're going to see it. Now, you can do a couple things here. You have some choices. You can let the plant suffocate. (laughs) Right. You can let it suffocate and let it die. And then you can talk about you know, you can start to hypothesize with the students, like, why did it die? And then they might be like, I don't know, I don't know. But then you can lead them to the conclusion of root strangulation, lack of oxygen anymore. There wasn't enough space. You'll also notice as where it's at, according to your window, you can talk about stretching and how leggy it gets and how it moved towards the sunlight. And that might have been a problem as to why the plant died. Or... When it gets big enough, you can open the bag and just let it grow outside of the bag. It will still die because there's no more water cycle going on Mm -hmm. to to keep the soil moist. So just like a lot of hypothesizing going on here, a lot of understanding the life cycle of a plant and a lot of understanding the water cycle. Really cool project. Very captivating. Whenever I did this in my classroom, I had like 30 bags because each kid had their own just tacked to a bulletin board, right? And it was the first thing they'd run to their bag and check out the growth the next day. They loved it. And I also had little like sheets for them so they could keep like daily accounts of what it looked like. So they'd have to draw what they see. And then they could go back like after two weeks, they could go back to day one and be like, there was nothing. And now there's like tons of veins (laughs) at the bottom. Those are roots. But it's like (laughs) cute. It's a great activity. Kids Kids love anything tangible, visible, and yeah. they also take pride in their own work. To see something that you started and to watch it like grow is amazing. And if you want, probably not now. I usually did this in the spring. Students could also have the option to take it home and put it in the ground. Totally. But you don't have to do that. You can do it now. Seeds will grow now. Just not well. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so interesting. I love that idea. Also, like the plant dying is a great opportunity to talk about how dead plants return to the earth. And it's like there's a lesson there on like death and the nitrogen cycle and all of that as well. You could go even farther and just leave it in that bag and it'll get moldy. And now you can talk about decomposers. Like it never stops. It's a little bag of science. When you do it for people who are going to try this at home, Is there a certain amount of light that the bag needs in order for it to germinate? Like, is there a best practice? Because I think I did this as a kid and I actually think we taped it to the windowsill. Yeah, you can do that too. You Mm -hmm. can totally do that too. You know, I don't know about that. I've never tried- Because if you were putting it in a bulletin board, then it was probably far from the window, right? And it's still- I was fortunate enough to always have bulletin boards that were like right next to a window. Oh, okay. So it did work, but I've never done like an experiment where I put one in total darkness. I can't say. I'm sorry. I can't say, but yeah. it might be a cool experiment for them to try multiple. Yeah. Even put multiple them places in, in their house, different rooms, different yeah, windows. Yeah, or tape one on the windowsill, tape you one on north, the wall. south, east, and west. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. So there's limitless options with that. I love yeah, that. Yeah. Get creative. Yeah. Pumpkin or lima bean. Yum. Okay, cool. So that's the mm-hmm. seed bag. Then... What's your sweet potato experiment with them? This one I loved and the students love too. 
again, we're focused on rooting, but we're not really talking about rooting. This one's really understanding like the scientific process and, Mm -hmm. and how that works. So essentially you're going to take three sweet potatoes, any kind of sweet potato is going to work. But if you're in the supermarket, look for one that already has eyes that maybe be a little bit older and is already sprouted because sometimes grocery store sweet potatoes have been sprayed so they don't sprout eyes. But if you see one that might have some eyes already going, you know, it's going to do what you need it to do. Right. Okay. So super easy. You take three sweet potatoes and you put them in three different liquid mediums. The first one being just water. The second one Mm -hmm. being water mixed with a little bit of root hormone. And the third one being any liquid that the student chooses. Okay. So you put it in those three and you put it in the window in a clear cup. Do the little toothpick thing where it's got a little anchorage so it can stay. The bottom third of the sweet potatoes in the water. And you start hypothesizing to the student. What do you think is going to happen here? Which sweet potato is going to grow the best roots? Which is going to grow the worst roots? What do you think it's going to look like? How many days do you think it will take for the first sweet potato to sprout roots? Mm -hmm. And they're going to start doing it. And the most fun part to this to me is kids get so creative and so excited because they're like, they'll say things like, well, Red Bull gives you wings. So I'm putting my last one in Red Bull. And you're like, let's see what happens. Good. Best of luck to you. (laughs) Right. Right. I was going to say, what's the weirdest thing? Is Red Bull the weirdest thing a kid has chosen? No, I had a student. I agreed with him. I couldn't allow this to happen, but he wanted to put his in vodka. Vodka. Okay. Or make a sweet potato vodka, baby. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) He was not hate it. We did not allow it to happen. But we did use rubbing alcohol rubbing alcohol yeah rubbing alcohol we were we, i was did get permission to do that but yeah like the limits are endless there kids love making choices mm-hmm. working with kids is all about giving them choices to make on their own and that's a good one and it's just a really cool way to again do another tangible experiment that's easy that doesn't take enough a lot of room that doesn't make too much of a mess and really yeah, have them have some deeper though. understanding of science and experiments you can even talk about like the control and the variable. There's just like so much you can get into with it and you can take it any direction you want. It's just a cool thing you can do with your kids at home. So when you get the sweet potato that has an eye that's like already sprouted, that's the part you want to put in the water, right? Yes and no. And you have, no? Okay. Right. So for those who aren't familiar, eyes are the little parts, those little round nuggets that start growing on the a potato nuts. when you yeah. have it sitting too long. Sometimes the eyes turn into like the vine part of the potato. So you never really know. I wish I could tell you. I don't really remember. There's a trick to know like which end you should start with. Like there's one end that's better than the other. I don't want to give bad information. So wing it. (laughs) I'll give it a quick Google and put a link. We'll put a link. I'm sure there's some sort of review of how to do this. Yeah, cool. Cool, cool. Sounds good. All right. Awesome. What you got? What do I got? Well, my thought was, I think propagation, I mean, I think roots are so interesting and I think like simple propagation with kids is really fun too. Well, I think this can be twofold. Mm -hmm. I think teaching kids how to propagate like a simple pothos or a simple philodendron in water is really fun. I've certainly done it. Also, I kind of love the idea of like a teacher who is teaching virtually to maybe even propagate their own plant and send like a little cutting to each kid. Is that like a crazy idea? No, that's really cool. To have like a class plant and every kid gets a part of the class plant in their home classroom yeah. and they get to nourish it and like watch it grow. That's kind of a fun idea. Or kids can even maybe grow their cuttings and then maybe send each other cuttings. Oh, that's cool. To do like a little interclass plant swap to get kids to connect in a different way. I love that. That's really cool. So many plants are so easy to propagate too. I'm actually propagating silver pothos right now. Are you really? Yeah, I'm like looking at it right now over there. Mm -hmm. It's cool. It's so fun. It's great. I love it. With pothos, you literally just snip off a vine and then isolate the nodes, the little knuckles of the plant, like give it a quarter inch on each side and stick it in water. And like, that's it. Uh Uh-huh. That's it. Or you can even plant it directly in dirt as well. You could do water propagation or dirt. And I just thought that would be like a really fun thing to do. So you know my chain of hearts, my very good chain of hearts? Yes. It was looking a little thin. I only let it like grow Uh down one side. 
I saw the nodes really starting to bulge down the vine. So I actually propagated it. Super easy plant to propagate. I never would have mm-hmm. thought, but super easy plant to propagate. So now it's like a little bit more full. And also a really good plant to propagate is you're going to have to give me the scientific name. Try to scantia zebrina. Right. Is a great mm-hmm. one. It's a great <laughs> one to propagate. Joe so just easy. looked at me on the video and mouthed it to me because it's a terrible name. It's a it's terrible a, name. So right. we'll call it try to scantia zebrina, the name that it should be called. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's purple. I mean, that's pur- a gorgeous purple. Beautiful plant. plant. Beautiful plant. And literally that one you can snip anywhere. Pop yeah. it in water and it will root 100%. If it doesn't, it's your fault. Yeah, it's your fault. (laughs) If I had one in a pot on my windowsill that crawled across three other pots and rooted itself naturally in three other pots, no help to me. I was like watering plants one day and it was like, I went to move the vine and couldn't because it was like the captain now of my new pot. Yeah, it was like, I'm not going anywhere, friend. No. Thank you, Territorial Seed Company, for sponsoring today's episode. Territorial Seed Company is a family-owned and operated business that's been selling high-quality seeds and plants for over 40 years. Plant Friends, they have over 2,000 varieties of vegetables, fruits, herbs, and flowers to choose from year-round, but as we're moving into the fall and cooler growing seasons, they are the only company that has a specific fall-winter seed catalog with over 20 varieties of garlic and also a specialized list of fall-friendly plants to grow. I am so excited to try growing their Italian red and Degansky varieties of garlic this year. So we're talking about engaging kids with plants in this episode. Plant Friends, fall is a great time to grow plants, especially with our kids being home this fall or maybe spending more time at home. So why not take some of the ideas from this episode and apply them? You can try planting Territorial Garden Seed Tape, which is so smart. It's biodegradable tape with perfectly spaced seeds on it, so your kids can just plant the tape up and not worrying about measuring distances. It would be a great project for younger kids. You can stay tuned for the Territorial Fast Fall Gardening Fact at the end of the episode for some really cool information about garlic and the different types that you can grow. Also, garlic would be an amazing activity to grow with your kids because you plant in the fall and harvest in the spring so they could track the entire growing period and then eat the harvest. How fun. I love that Territorial Seed Company is a company for gardeners run by gardeners with the fact that they produce their own seeds in their organic research farm or they personally test every variety in-house to ensure we're getting the best quality stuff. Territorial Seed Company is offering listeners 20% off with code BLOOM2020. So head to TerritorialSeed.com and check out their amazing educational offerings and seeds and use code BLOOM20, BLOOM20 at checkout for 20% off. All right, back to Joe. Number four is terrariums and fairy gardens. I had a friend last year, her daughter was really into fairies. And for her birthday, she got like a little parlor palm and built this whole fairy garden out of a planter. And it was so cute. And her daughter was really into like checking it and adding to it and stuff like that. Yeah. Like checking in on it every day. And it's such a wonderful place for imagination. And I just finished intro to horticultural therapy. I'm learning a lot like I mentioned about attention restoration and mental fatigue and what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, restorative spaces and a component of a space being restorative in order for you to kind of recoup. You have to have that sense of being away and being away if you can't get outside, if you're stuck in your house, having terrariums or having like little worlds. So it's harder to quote unquote, feel away when you're just with a plant. But if you have a miniature plant or you have a terrarium that represents a little world, like maybe with little figurines or that has landscaping, like it's such a beautiful opportunity for you to like get pulled into this other world. And especially for kids who have like such amazing imaginations. So I don't fun. Know if you know this, you're actually onto something. There's a huge cultural shift around restorative practice in Mm -hmm. childhood trauma and education right now. And one of the interesting, yeah, childhood trauma has been deeply misunderstood for centuries. And now we're starting to kind of like touch into childhood trauma and how you actually respond to childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. And 
when a child reacts negatively due to trauma, they need to come back to baseline before you're able to reason with them. So a teacher's initial reaction might be like, stop it and give a consequence or whatever it is, myself included more than ever. Mm -hmm. But truly through science, we're understanding through trauma that your words and anything you do are not going to be effective to a child unless you allow them to come to baseline first. Nothing's being absorbed unless you bring them to baseline, right? So we say like, you can't reach the brain until you go through the heart. Like it's kind of like a whole teaching thing. So what we create, I hate this term, but a lot of teachers call it calm down corners. But I really like a little bit of a restorative space or some professional, we can call it a restorative space. And teachers have these all over the classroom. They have like little trinkets or things that are tangible. Kids can like get their mind off of it. But you talking fairy garden, that would be a perfect thing to have in a little corner of your classroom or a little corner of your house where if your child or student is kind of having a little bit of a difficult time, like give them five minutes to just kind of like bring themselves to baseline through this escaping reality there. Like it would be beautiful. Yeah. Really, really cool. I love it. Yeah. Just the act of having it is so cute and so fun. And I want to give a shout out to this woman. I'm going to link the book in the show notes, but this woman actually just came out with a whole book on terrariums for the family. Ooh, I love and it. yeah, it looks like it's, I haven't gotten my hands on it yet, but I've researched it a bunch and it looks like it's really helpful and the science breakdown of plants, but also like how to put together a terrarium successfully. That's like going to be helpful. So we'll link to it in the show notes for people. But yeah, also the act of making one is oh, super yeah. fun because they get to be totally creative around like what environment they want to create. And I have an episode, I think it was episode 19 of Bloom and Grow Radio. So people can scroll back if they want to learn how to like actually step by step make a terrarium. But part of the fun is Like I have a whole Amazon storefront of little things that you can put in a terrarium, like the little miniature gnomes and fairies and people. And now there's like so many fun things you could do, or you could like go in your backyard or go for a nature walk, find some sticks or twigs or like little things that you want to incorporate from around your home area. There's just like so many options. And I feel like it's good on like so many different levels. I love it. It's a good one. Yeah. Okay. And now the last one, This is inspired because I was really moved by a story that you told on our last episode that I'd love for you to retell just about the petting cactus, which is very in line with what you just said about like creating a restorative space for kids. But a lot of people are like working from home and maybe they don't have time to like make a terrarium with their kids totally. But there's definitely a list of really fun interactive plants that we've put together that just having in a kid's room like could be really fun, could get them engaged with nature, could get them away from their screen for a minute. So will you share the petting cactus story? Because we actually had one of our Patreon plant friends and I had messaged you about this, but she is a first year teacher in the midst of this pandemic. And she has been like struggling, like all the teachers, everyone. But she said that she was so moved by your conversation that her mom like searched all over for a petting cactus and finally found one. And she Uh has it and she's taking care of it. And she's so excited to use it with kids. I think she works with special needs kids. Love it. Yeah. She's so excited to like take it to her classroom whenever it's available, but it was a really resonating story for people. I'd love to have it on this episode too. So same concept. Like when I was first dabbling in like restorative spaces, I was traveling for doing some shows and I was in Arizona And in the airport, I actually picked up a petting cactus. And it's literally a a little tiny cactus, maybe about three inches high and an inch or two inches wide. And instead of spines and needles, it just has soft fur. And you can pet it like very gently with your finger. And like if kids are kind of like not having it that day Mm -hmm. i would just like either put the petting cactus on their desk or have them go give it a visit and they would just like one finger pet it and they would just like chill out like just like a moment with that plant was just like just really something for them that allowed them to like get back in a mind space that they were able to like recept knowledge and and have that ability and just the way that they connected to it was unbelievable like they would like i'd walk in the morning and they would just be a little bit of a line where they could like give them a little two finger pat. And I was just like, this is unbelievable. That's when I really realized the power of plants in the classroom, which is why the following year I turned my entire class into a concrete jungle Jungle. of like, what did I have? 100 and 
116, something like that. Was that the minutes? final count? Yeah, something like that. Something around there. It might have been 120. I don't really remember, but yep, yep. So then after that, after seeing them interact with that petting cactus, I was hooked. It's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Pretty neat. That's amazing. So what other plants do you feel like are fun, interactive options for kids? Kids love carnivorous plants. A pitcher plant. Of course. A Venus fly trap, a sticky plant, whatever Mm -hmm. you can get. Like those are great. And they're actually not as uncommon as you would think. I see them in almost every plant shop I've ever been in. Oh, for sure. Right. Even like Lowe's or Home Depot will have them on a little shelf. They're usually not Mm -hmm. doing fantastic, but they're very easy to actually (laughs) Yeah. The trick now people, they will die if you don't do They will die. I've killed one. Yeah. Yeah, I have two. I have two. High humidity. High, 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 high humidity. I currently have mine in, Maria, you're going to know the actual name for this. Beauty and the Beast Dome. (laughs) Oh, a (laughs) cloche. You have a cloche on top? I do have a cloche (laughs) on top of my pitcher plant and I've had it for two years now, still doing great. The pitchers have like doubled in size finally. Wow. Yeah, it's doing great. And Venus ply traps definitely need something like that as well. Terrariums, even though the terrarium might be open at the top, it really helps with humidity. And those plants are going to thrive in a terrarium. Pro tip, pro tip, pro tip. <laughs> Don't Hit kill a fly and put it in there. Oh my For some reason, it like just does not work. Like the Venus, if you will, or the mm-hmm. pitcher will just like shrivel like get black and shrivel and not do well. If they catch one naturally, fantastic. Allow nature to do its thing. But most of the time, you're going to put something too big in there or an animal that way it would never be able to eat. Like a cricket Mm -hmm. has a very hard exoskeleton. The enzymes in the pitcher or the Venus flytrap excretes are not able to break down that hard shell. So it's very specific. So if it catches something, cool. If not, just let it be. But it will still thrive if you just put it in a terrarium or cloche. Also, terrible soil, terrible soil, like the worst soil you could ever get. That's perfect. (laughs) So like literally my pitcher plant right now is in bark and sphagnum. Yeah, sphagnum pretty much. Yeah, just a little bit of bark and sphagnum and up to the top with water. And I just put the cloche on top and then like every like three months, I'll like add a little bit more water. That's it. That's amazing. That's, That's a really easy plant to set up for your kids. Great. And again, you can talk about the water cycle there because you'll definitely get a lot of condensation. Yeah, that's so fun. I love mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I also love the mimosa pudica, the sensitive plant. Love. It's love a little bit plant. of a controversial topic sometimes in the plant community, but I do love it. I'm pro because. Oh, yes, because petting it. So technically, you're not supposed to pet it too much because the plant will go into shock and then it won't be happy. How can you not pet it, though? How can you not pet it? For those of you who don't know, also called a, what is it called? A petting fern or what is a common name? I've heard it only a sensitive plant. It has another name. Yeah. Petting something. I don't remember. Uh But if you like stroke the main vein Mm -hmm. where the leaves are coming out, all the leaves will kind of just fold in and close in. Mm -hmm. It's so elegant the way they do it, too. It's like beautiful to watch. (laughs) it's really great and cool. So how could you not touch it? But I love it. But yeah, you got to be careful with kids too, because they will definitely overdo it or touch it with greasy fingers or something. But it's a totally I love that plant. I love that plant. Mm -hmm. Uh, Love it. So I had a listener send me seeds and they're somewhere. Oh oh my God. Oh, the other plant that just personally I'm obsessed with, but I think could be super fun for kids is the oxalis. Do you have an oxalis plant? Shamrock plant? Oh, I don't, but they come in the variety of the deep purple or the green. I don't. The flowers are beautiful, very dainty. Yes. I don't. I never have. But I have to be honest with you. Most people, when I see them in people's houses, they don't look like they're doing well. So what's the trick? I think I have mine in a little bit too much light right now. They like bright, indirect light. Mm. And they like to get their soil drying out a little bit before you rewater them. Mm. But mine's been doing great. But The movement of the leaves is so dramatic. The leaves are wide open in the morning and then really closed at night. So that's just another fun thing to like be noticing with children to like understand that plants are living things that move all the time. My rattlesnake Um, plant is like a heavy. Yeah, totally. Maranta. Mm -hmm. A Maranta. Yeah. Any type of prayer plant. The other thing, let's see what else. Oh, a mushroom grow kit. 
they make all those fun mushroom grow kits and those things double in size, like in 48 hours, right? Once they show face. Yes. Yeah. Once they show face, like the growth is so rapid. It's so exciting. Even as an adult, I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. So I used to do these in my classroom with my students a company, I think you remember, I was sponsored by this company, Back to the Roots. Have you heard of Back yeah. to the Roots? Wait, didn't I introduce you guys? <laughs> Did you? Is that how this happened? It might have been because they. I used to work with them too. I think did. we had talked about it. But yeah, anyway. I used to work with them before I even did. I bought a couple of their mushroom grow kits mm-hmm. and we grew shiitakes in my classroom. And then it turned into a whole lesson of farm to table with my students. And I had a couple chefs come in. We harvested the mushrooms and we made gluten-free <gasps> mushroom pasta with my class. I sent you some pictures. It was really amazing. Okay. It was, and it was so cool because it was totally cross-curricular. Like the kids had to multiply fractions to do the measurements of the recipe. And then they had to do economics. How much could we sell this for based off how much we spent on growing? And wow, it was fascinating. It was fascinating. And they also have aquaponic mm-hmm. sets too, or you can actually have a fish that yes. does doodle in a water and makes fertilizer. <laughs> it <laughs> makes <laughs> for the fertilizer for the seeds. <laughs> right, for They've the got, we'll top. link to them too. They've got great products, super, yeah. super interactive products. Mm-hmm. But yeah, any sort of mushroom grow kit would be fun. I also just like love herbs. I mean, I had such a fun time last year with my friend's kids planting up herb grow bags with them. I mean, it was in the spring. So for us on the East Coast in November, you know, September, October, November might be hard. But even in those indoor grow kits, growing herbs that they can smell and cook with, like that whole idea of learning where your food comes from is just Just so important. Right, right. Yeah. And the last one that I know you love, you're a fan of radishes, right? Big fan. Super easy to grow. And they grow so fast. I think seed to harvest is only about 16 days. Let me Google that to give you an accurate. Yeah. And they sprout so quickly. So fast. And you just put them over and it's like, done. 22 days. 22 days, baby. That's what I'm reading. 22 days. 22 days seed to harvest, sprinkle them out and... It's like just over two weeks. That's fast. That's fast. And you're watching the sprout. You're watching like the three weeks. foliage grow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're smart. We're good at math. One day over three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like that's amazing. And it's so fun. Once again, just like teaching kids to grow. So we want to know how you guys get your kids growing and how you guys are using plants with your kids. So please tag me and Joe on Instagram. Joe's Do it. times three. But before we go, Joe, I want to ask you because you are such a botanical bro. You're killing it with your plant game these days. Thanks girl. What are you loving? Like what's your collection looking like lately? It's pretty vast. I have a couple favorites right now. So you will be happy to know that I got a Hoya that's thriving. Put her (gasps) in like the brightest of light. Yes. But I also forgot that I love, 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 love to do amaryllis bulbs. I do them at all times of the year. Oh my gosh, me too. I don't just do it at the holidays. So I kept two bulbs that turned out amazing. And I'm about to cut off the stalks and put them back into dormancy pretty soon here. (gasps) So I'm very excited about those. But I do have to tell you, my favorite has shifted. I have a new... Okay. I'll always love my old favorites, which are my fiddle, which is humongous. Mm -hmm. My fiddle comes up to my eyes now. And I'm 6'3". Just to put that in perspective for everyone. You had just gotten her when we did our interview three years ago. Yeah. That was crazy. And I will always love my variegated chain of hearts. Love you, babe. But I have a jade, a very simple common jade, like nothing extravagant Mm -hmm. that someone gave me for my birthday a year ago in a tiny little jelly jar, like even a baby food jar, if you will. Like a little cutting. Okay. Yep. A little cutting. And this baby is thriving. I finally figured out a really good watering schedule, put her in the right soil, put it in the brightest of light. Literally every leaf has a ring of red around it. (gasps) The main stalk is now like a tree trunk. It's got that woody stalk. This thing, I pruned it in two areas. And as soon as I did that, I never had to prune it again because it has offshoots coming out all over the oh my God. place. It's insane. It's doing so well. And like Jade, historically, my entire life has not been an easy plant for me to grow. I've just always mm-hmm. messed them up for whatever reason. Could not keep them 
doing well. And this one is just thriving. And I am loving watching her thrive. So that's amazing. Really what a plant parent win. I know, my little heart. <laughs> what a plant parent win. Doesn't that feel so good when like you've killed something and then you finally figure it out? Like it's almost worse the pain of killing something because it like feels so good after, yeah. you know? Oh, and you know, I'm the orchid whisperer and one of my orchids you are. is yet again in bloom. When we were at the Amazon spheres, you were like educating me on the orchid parts and the flowers and all sorts of things. I was like, okay, yeah. Joey. <laughs> yeah, girl. Yeah, girl. I'm a little bit of an orchid man. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, where can everybody go find you? You have great teacher content, but also you have a lot of just general hilarious content and you do hey. funny like plant nature spoofs too you know your plant daddy comes out sometimes so where can everyone follow you and listen to you because you're a podcaster too i am you can listen to my podcast it's called social studies a little riff on uh, my former teacher self social studies the podcast where i study being social by being social which maria has been on before i have been on Yep. You can listen to social studies or you can just find me literally on any social media platform. My handle is at Mr. D times three. That's M-R-D-T-I-M-E-S, the number three. And then I'll be back on the road in 2021 doing shows all over the country. So check out my website, Mr. D times three.com. And that is a reading from the book of D. (laughs) I can't wait to see you live. I almost called out sick in cats to come to one of your performances and whipped out last minute. But I can't wait. So close time and time again. Your family has seen it before you. It's crazy. I know, truly. But can't wait. Thank you so much. What a lovely conversation. And I can't wait to see how people use our suggestions. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much, Joe, for this awesome conversation. He's so inspiring. Definitely go follow him on all the channels for so many giggles. I mean, I'm always giggling when I'm watching his Instagrams and his TikToks, but also a lot of helpful teaching stuff as well. It's time for our Territorial Seed Fast Fall Gardening Fact. So here is a fact about garlic, something that I did not know. There are actually two main types of garlic, hardneck and softneck. So hardneck garlics have a stiffer center stem, and they have fewer but larger cloves, and they're usually more robust and spicy in the flavor profile. Softneck garlics have less firm center of a stem, and then they have many smaller cloves, and they have a much more mild flavor. So soft necks tend to store for longer than hard necks as well, with some types being able to be used even eight months after harvest. You can learn about all of the amazing different types of garlic. I believe they have over 20 varieties at territorialseed.com and use code BLOOM20 at checkout for 20% off. Thanks, Territorial Seed, for sponsoring today's episode. Also, thank you so much to Soltech Solutions for sponsoring today's episode. They are my go-to luxury grow light company. We all know I love them. I have three of their aspect pendant style lights hanging in my apartment. And a fun fact is I actually macrameed the cords of their lights to give them more of a boho effect in our apartment. So there's really fun ways you can personalize the lights, but still reap the benefits of that highly precise photosynthetic spectrum, giving your babies the light and food that they need. For 20% off of your very own Soltech Solutions Aspector Highland Light, check out soltechsolutions.com and use the code 20BLOOM, 20BLOOM at checkout for 20% off. Once again, that's soltechsolutions.com and code 20BLOOM for 20% off. And of course, thank you to all of you amazing listeners. I so appreciate you. I hope you share this with anyone you feel like it will help. This episode is really made for parents who have been home with their kids looking for things to do. And also teachers, there are some really fun ideas for teachers to implement as well. So I hope that it helps you and your families keep blooming and keep growing. Plant friends, thank you so much for tuning in today. If you like what you heard, make sure you are subscribed to the show so you never miss an episode. And while you're making sure you're subscribed, why don't you head on over to the review section of whatever podcast player you're tuning into and leave us a review. I would greatly appreciate it. 
If you are interested in more fun and educational planty content, well, Plant Friend, I've got a whole lot for you. Subscribe to the Bloom and Grow YouTube show, which is my YouTube channel where I bring you along for my personal plant journey, as well as share informational content that pairs with our podcast episodes. Follow me at Bloom and Grow Radio on Instagram for behind the scenes, sneak peeks at upcoming episodes, my daily planty lessons and thoughts, and most importantly, tune into my Instagram stories where I am constantly talking with you listeners and plant friends and polling you for content ideas and I'm always interested in seeing what you're loving these days on Instagram. Join the Bloom and Grow mailing list and get a free download of the Molly Mansfield Keep Blooming print that she created exclusively for our community. And if you can, support Bloom and Grow Radio by becoming a plant friend on Patreon. For as little as $4 a month, you not only help me bring these planty and informative episodes to thousands of ears around the world, but you will also get the super secret planty password to our exclusive Bloom and Grow Radio Garden Club Facebook group, which is a wonderfully active group of plant friends of the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast who make up what I like to call the plantiest corner of the internet. It is a lot of fun over there. And as always, my sweet plant friends, I am here for you. If you have ideas for episode topics, guests, or if you're possibly a business interested in sponsoring the show, reach out to me because I am here to help all of you keep blooming and keep growing.